guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the new episode of the series Restoring an Alberassi 312. In this episode, you will see a lot of stuff that I did because there are very small things, but all together make a very nice plan. First of all, I will show you the water tank. Me and Andrea, finally, we closed the water tank just under my feet. This is the water tank, this is the lid, and this is the water gouge sender. I use the video one. I need to test it, but I will test in March when the temperature outside rise. I don't want to leave water with the cold uh, temperature, so I prefer to do this in March. And after that, I will lay down the new cabin sole. Another thing I need to fix is just here. And this is the panel the, where this is the panel adapted for the new installation. You can see here the shower pump. You can see the shower pump. I already made the connection for the cable, but I need to make clear. I will do when I test the, the shower pump. The shower pump make a siphon very high over the uh, water level, but I adapt here the, this panel. I can open here. I have access inside here to check all the stuff. This is the valve, very easy. I will write here, I will put a, a label that this is open and this is closed. This is the Alex valve that I trust. And we can see also here the job is finished. And here we are, it's time to close the water tank. This is the last lid that we need to drill the hole to insert and install the water uh, sander of the video. And then in this moment is sign all the contour of uh, the lid because he wants to know how to put the seal. We take the measure of the space and the depth of the water tank because we need to cut the sander in the correct length. And we check the position of the sander. After a while we decided to install the instruments just in the middle of the sander, in the part where there is the most deep uh, uh, position of the tank. And Andrea is drilling the hole that fit correctly the diameter of the instruments. We make the test uh, before cutting uh, the correct length because we won't do when the sander is installed and the lid is on the position that we need to fix. Oh no, it's still a small hole. We need to make more bigger.
you need to follow very well the instruction when you mount this uh, type of uh, stuff, but it's not difficult. We use also a 4200 3M sealant to be sure that no any drip of water come out from the seal. We will cut the excess of the length of the sander when installed in the water tank. And here we are, TEF gel to avoid the corrosion between the stainless steel bolts and the supports for the lids. You can see there is a very thick uh, uh, rubber seal. You have to screw the bolts very slowly to make sure that the gasket compresses properly and thus also avoid the breakage of the piece of aluminium now no more available. I'm sure that after this type of job, not any drop of water will come out from the gasket. I decided to use a lot of TEF gel to avoid the corrosion between two different materials, the aluminium and the bolt made in stainless steel. The height of the tank is about 35 cm, so we cut the excess of the sander. And also in this case, the Bosch tool is indispensable for clean and quick work. Hey guys, my water tank is completely closed. I use a huge quantity of TEF gel to protect the stainless steel uh, bolts to the aluminium, uh, aluminium stuff so there is no corrosion more and this is my new um, water uh, gauge sander made by VDO and hope it works very well or better than original but now it's completely sealed and completely finished my work. So. I need to tighten a little more the bolts and after that we can say job done for this uh, uh, task. After various information and search on the internet I decided to install this 20 liter isotemp stainless steel water heater. I am very happy uh, because I trust in this type of brand. After unpacking the water heater, we check that everything is in order and nothing is missing. We try to understand which are the connections and how to put in the correct position the water heater inside the engine room. This is the first attempt that Andrea do and he want to understand which is the best height and the best position. We decide to install it very low so there is no need of uh, water expansion uh, bowl.
Franco are coming in the power plant because we need to make a two support made by Corian for water heater. We don't want that the base of the water heater uh, compress the uh, waterproof uh, uh, sound uh, panels. After cut the Corian, Franco is made around the contour and Andrea in a while will drill the all in the correct position. The Corian is about uh, 22 mm thick. We cannot use the whole holes of the old water heater, so we have to find and understand where the new ones will fall to prevent them from going to make disasters. We double check, triple check the exact position of the holes. In my opinion, the engine room must be perfectly clean and tidy, where everything is easily accessible and where everything is easily removable. Andre is going to cut the soundproof panel inside the engine room to make space for the Corian base for the water heater. Yes, it fits perfectly. And now it's time to use the metallic tape to protect the exposed soundproof panel. The first support is installed and now we are going to install the second one. But before do that one, we need to check if the first one was put in correct position. After this job, I think the water heater will stay there for another 30 years, like the original one. The second Corian base is installed and now it's time to protect with the metallic tape the second hole on the waterproof panel. A good cleaning session, all clean and tidy. Uh, we are going to the finished task. You need to be two people to bolt on the wall uh, the water heater. 
Oh. This is the final installation of the heater. It is very well installed. Me and Andrea make a very nice work. We use a Korean base to the support because I don't want to make pressure on the uh, soundproof panel. 20 liters. Another of the important things is to bring the whale hose to the water heater and prepare all the conduits ready for the connection. As you see in my previous video, I like to use the plastic band and make everything tidy and clean. I don't want the cable on the hose jumping around the boat. All must be very secure. I leave a space here just under the hose, I completely fixed. And there is space here so I can clean. If there is some water that drip, no problem at all. Here the stop, the bilge pump and the water pump. Start again the works. Andrea is preparing the connection for the water intake of the head and this is the last task uh, uh, regarding the head. After this uh, task we can consider close all the process to install the head on my boat. Of course we use the whole method, very easy and very reliable and you can always go back without uh, too much problem and too much effort. Remember to put the correct quantity of amp around your uh, thread because if you put too much you can broken the seacock. This is the hermetic pass to use on the hemp. After install on the seacock, the last piece of uh, bronze, it's time to come to make the siphon on the pipe that bring the water on the head. This is to avoid bad surprises. You ask me to do, but I tell you that it was already planned to do it. Thanks anyway for your attention and your advices. I use a very good quality hose made by Vetus. When I put stuff on my boat, I'm always looking for the best quality stuff. I don't care about the cost because I don't want to come back in the near future. And this is the siphon that go just behind the wood strips. There is enough space to install it there. I decided to change the white one with the beige one because match the color is more beautiful. So me and Rea, we throw away this hose and put another one in better quality made by Vetus. Yes, of course, this white one was very good quality, but I just tell you that I'm looking for the best. This is the best hose on the market. It's 
time to cut in the correct length. Take out the metal that could cut your hand and install on the correct position. My toilet job is finished. We move on. I already finished to install the water intake for the toilet. I need to install the three data log through hole and the instruments. I need to close this hole. I made a very long siphon just behind the wood strip. There is a siphon and a siphon break. Oh, I'm very happy. I will cover all these holes with a mahogany panel. Using the best quality Bourbon Teak, me and Franco made the new anti-roll wood strips made by Teak on the cockpit box. The old one was completely ruined and very old, so I throw away them and I decide to make the new one. Uh, Franco, with thick experience, take about half an hour to make those two pieces of uh, teak. Here are all the process. You need to find the correct inclination of the base of the strips because if uh, you make mistake, they don't stay in position, they stay in very bad position. So you need to check. And here we are, this is the inclination. They are not parallel pipettes, but uh, they are trapezoidal, so you have to cut them in correct uh, shape. We cut the end of uh, each piece of tick a uh, 15 degrees inclination. And now a nice rounded edge to have a nice feeling when you touch the tick. The last sign by hand. We are very close to finish the task. We need only to fix them on the box. All my box are completely rebuilt. I close all the holes, especially the old one that was used to install the engine panel. So I need to install the new engine panel. So I want uh, to start again with the new box. I already paint them, so I consider them brand new. The last check and all my box are completely finished. Uh, they are ready to be installed. 
So guys, if you like my video, please thumb up. I'm waiting for your comment. Write me. I'm very happy to get your advice. See you in the next episode. Ciao!